Hello everyone. Welcome to my series of lessons on the physics of sailing. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only, and are only intended to introduce basic topics for beginner cruisers in light to moderate wind conditions. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can replace taking accredited courses covering all aspects of basic cruising from qualified and experienced instructors, and gaining experience by starting slowly and increasing your knowledge and experience over time. You are responsible for obtaining a marine weather forecast and limiting your activities to weather conditions within your own level of experience and ability. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. In this lesson, we'll learn about the wind over the boat. That is, we'll learn what is the difference between the true wind and the apparent wind. You may have heard these terms bandied about, but maybe you haven't been able to find out exactly what they are. But by the end of this lesson, this should all come clear to you. Okay, first, what is the true wind? As the name implies, it's the real wind of the day. It's the speed and direction of the real wind over the water. The true wind may change wherever you go, based on geography or wind gusts or changing weather patterns. But wherever you are, the true wind is the wind over the water that you'd feel if you were not moving, if you were perfectly still. Now let's talk about another type of wind that I like to call the induced wind. Let's say, for example, it's a completely windless day. There's not a breath of wind, and the water is glass smooth. But let's say you're in a boat, and you're motoring forward at, for example, six knots. Here you are, motoring forward at six knots. You'll feel a wind in your face of six knots, coming from directly over your bow. This wind is induced purely by the forward motion of your boat and it's exactly equal and opposite to your boat speed and direction through the water. There can be an exception to this. If you're in a current, such as a tidal current, the induced wind could be at a slightly different speed, coming from a slightly different direction, because then your boat is not moving directly forward over the ground. But for the purposes of this discussion, we'll ignore this factor. Okay, now let's put the true wind and the induced wind together. We'll add the two vectors to see the result. Suppose now it's a windy day and you're under sail. Let's say this vector shows the true wind of the day. And let's say you're sailing forward at six knots. This is the induced wind of six knots coming from directly forward. We need to add these two vectors together to see the result. The result is the wind that you actually feel on the boat. It's the wind you sail in. It's the apparent wind. The induced wind plus the true wind equals the apparent wind. The apparent wind is the wind that is apparent to you in your boat and your sails. Here, I've drawn the sails with the luffs pointing directly into the oncoming apparent wind. You can only trim your sails to the apparent wind. Okay, so that's the true wind and the apparent wind. But let's look at these vectors a little more closely to see what we can understand about them. The first thing we can notice from this diagram is that the apparent wind is always coming from forward of the true wind from the perspective on your boat. That's because the induced wind always comes from directly forward. The second thing we can notice is that when you are sailing upwind, the induced wind adds to the true wind. So the apparent wind is actually stronger than the true wind when you're sailing upwind. This fact can lead to a myth that a sailboat can create its own wind to sail in. Hmm, nice idea, but not true. On a day when there's zero wind, you're not going anywhere. Okay, what about sailing downwind? How do the true and induced winds add together when you're sailing downwind? Here, you're sailing downwind on a broad reach, and the true wind is coming from aft of your beam, and this is the induced wind. Again, we add the induced wind to the true wind and get the apparent wind. 
As you can see, when you're sailing downwind, the induced wind subtracts from the true wind. So, sailing downwind, the apparent wind is less than the true wind. When you're sailing downwind, there's less wind over your boat because the induced wind subtracts from the true wind. Imagine trying to sail dead downwind at six knots in a six knot wind. Then you'd be going with the wind and there would be zero knots of wind to fill your sails. So you just can't do it. In light winds, you probably need to sail on a broad reach and drive your way to a downwind destination. Okay, where's the crossover point? If you're turning upwind, at what point does the induced wind start to add to the true wind? First, let's look at a beam reach, where the apparent wind is coming directly across your beam. Here's the apparent wind coming from directly over your beam, and this is the induced wind. So, the apparent wind minus the induced wind equals the true wind. So, on a beam reach, you are actually still sailing downwind from the true wind, and the true wind is still stronger than the apparent wind. But if you continue to turn upwind, you will reach a point where the true wind and the apparent wind become equal in strength. And the true and apparent winds form an isosceles triangle with the induced wind. So this is the crossover point. When you're turning upwind, it's after this point that the induced wind starts to add to the true wind so that the apparent wind is stronger than the true wind. Your fastest point of sail will be a close reach ahead of a beam reach. But the efficiency of different points of sail is a subject for a future lesson. Incidentally, this is also how a wind package is able to calculate and display your true wind. A wind package can only measure the apparent wind. That's all it can sense. But it can get your speed through the water from your knot meter. Then your wind package assumes the induced wind is coming from directly forward and is equal in strength to your boat speed through the water your wind package performs the same vector subtraction, the apparent wind minus the inferred induced wind, to estimate and display the true wind. I say estimate because it doesn't take into account the drift if you're in a current, and it doesn't take into account any leeway. But it may be a good enough approximation for most sailors. Okay, so that's the true and the apparent wind. But there are a couple of questions we can answer from our new understanding. The first question is, why does a tack go through such a large angle? Let's take a look at the vectors. Let's say this is the true wind, and here you're sailing on a close haul in the apparent wind. As we saw, the apparent wind is forward of the true wind from the perspective of your boat. But that pushes you further downwind, away from the true wind. You can't sail higher upwind than this. On the other tack, it's the same thing on the other side. Again, the apparent wind is forward of the true wind, and it pushes you further downwind from the true wind. So when you tack, you go from sailing in the apparent wind on one side to the apparent wind on the other side. It's not a 90 degree turn, it's about 110 degrees. That's why a tack is through such a large angle. The second question we can answer is, why can we turn upwind in a wind gust. Racers know to turn up wind if a gust hits their boat. Why is that? Here's a boat sailing on a close hull, with the induced and true winds added together to show the apparent wind. Then along comes a wind gust. A gust is just an increase in speed of the true wind. You can see the apparent wind has shifted upwind towards the true wind because the true wind has become stronger. In this diagram, the induced wind has also shifted slightly towards the true wind because you've turned up wind. So in a gust, you can immediately turn up wind during the gust, then resume your original course after the gust has passed. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. Again, we covered a lot in this lesson, so watch it again until you're comfortable with everything. In the next lesson, we'll look at another important subject, and that is, what are the points of sale? I hope you enjoyed this video. These videos are all the lectures I give on board my Cruise and Learn trips for the basic, intermediate, and advanced cruising courses for the Sail Canada course standards.
And hey, to all you instructors out there, feel free to show these videos to your students if you think they're useful. Thanks everyone for watching and stay safe on the water.